like oil companies are kind of taking advantage of the situation and any any little excuse they can find to jack the price up it certainly seems like they're uh, they're doing a little bit of that I mean if they came up with a with a cost-effective vehicle you know I think you know I wouldn't have a problem with an electric car right now it's just they, they seem to be you know from my standpoint I'm not willing to go out and pay forty or fifty thousand dollars for a car right now just to, to be energy efficient I think um, I'm really looking forward to them, you know, starting to get these into production, push the cost of production down to where they start to become affordable, and then, you know, I'd buy one in an instant. It's pretty obvious, I think, in this country that the oil companies have, you know, without being any sort of a conspiracy theorist, I think the oil companies, it's definitely in their best interest to keep us uh, sort of tied to, to oil as long as they possibly can. They've got, you know, a, a huge interest and a lot of money invested in the infrastructure to keep us using oil. So um, I don't think it's entirely far-fetched to think that the oil companies have had a hand in sort of suppressing some of these technologies that I think could be a lot further along than they are. Fuel cells and the solar panels. I'm riding the bicycle right now because of the price of gas, you know, it's, uh, the economy is going, I don't know if it's going up or down, but uh, I'm using the bike right now because of this insane prices that's going on. You know, if we had an electric car that was affordable, I'd get it in a minute, you know. Uh, the price of gas don't really bother me. I, uh, 20 gallon take, it's only, what, 10 cents, so. It's only $2 more when you fill up. I'd buy an electric car if it looked great. Sure. Um, well, before when the gas was reasonable, I could fill up the Escalade for about 40, maybe 50 bucks. Now it takes $70 to fill up this car. I'm serious. Now, uh, do I like it? No but I can't do anything about it. So, you know, I'm lucky that I have a, a charge card, a gas card, and I go in and I fill up. But I have cut down my driving time and, and choose, I'm more selective about where I'm going and if it's necessary to go. And I'm, I'm accepting more offers of ride be picked up now. I'm not the hey, taxi. Okay, now with the electric cars, a friend, friends of mine have mentioned that they're considering. I do know that my daughter's girlfriend in school, one girl did have one. Uh, I think a hybrid and, and brought it to school and I, I'm just going to wait around till I hear that there are more sites that, that you can charge up that, and that they've also considered making them more a, a luxury type looking car. You know the RAV4 is a cute car, you know it's actually our housekeeper's car but you know I need a big vehicle You know, I'm always transporting people and, and I use it a lot. So. cents. <laughs> I'm going to have to take out a loan just to fill my tank. Yeah. Oh, electric car? Electric car, yeah. That's a good idea. Oh my god. It gets 180 miles on one charge. This is great. So, check this out. I got dressed up like a news reporter, headed down to Santa Monica City Hall, and asked them about their electric cars. 
specifically in the energy area, we're moving towards energy independence. This solar port behind us is one example of a solar energy uh, facility. We have a number of other solar energy projects around the city. Almost no building is being built now by the city, by the uh, city government, without some thought given to a renewable aspect to it. I'm here at City Hall with Rick Sykes, and we're here at the Solar Port, where he's going to tell us about the Santa Monica program for solar energy. Well, this is our solar port, and we have photovoltaic cells here that recharge the vehicles that are parked under here. We have about uh, we have 12 Rav4 electric vehicles parked here. We have another uh, 10 Gem vehicles, neighborhood electric vehicles. Uh, pickup and a small R car that we're operating in the city. Um, so how many miles do you think the average person drives per day? Well, I think the average commuter is up to a maximum of about 30 miles uh, commute. I don't think the average driver drives that much. In the city our vehicles go about 15 miles a day average. Now what would happen if you don't if you didn't use green power to energize the car like for instance nuclear or coal power? Well the green power that we buy in Santa Monica is cleaner obviously than nuclear or coal. Nuclear has its own uh, waste problems. The coal has the emissions problems. Are there any obvious differences between driving an electric vehicle and um, a gas-fueled car? In this vehicle, you can get on the freeway, you can uh, do all your city driving, you can do anything that you do in a regular gasoline vehicle. So what about the new high-speed Chargers. The high-speed charger would let you charge in about two hours. If you used a standard charger, it would take you four to six hours to get a full charge. So you can park your car at work and recharge it there? Then. Oh yeah, yeah. most uh, cities encourage electric vehicles and will actually provide free charging for electric vehicles. the city model reaching out to the citizens of Santa Monica and how do you think they're responding to it? Well I think it goes both ways. Uh, the city is setting an example that many other people follow but I think a lot of people are on their own initiative doing quite a bit in the uh, energy independence arena. Really? Tell us an example of that. Uh, well we have a number of citizens I believe one um, that you are going to be visiting soon Paul Scott has put solar panels on his rooftop and is actually driving an electric vehicle, much the way this facility behind us is using solar energy to power the electric vehicles underneath it. We're here with Paul Scott, and actually you wouldn't know it by looking at it, but this house is energy independent. It has solar panels on the top, and we're here in his electric car. So tell us, Paul, what motivates you to do this, and is it possible for anybody to do this? Well, I'm motivated by the environmental aspects of it because I didn't want to contribute any more to global warming. And I considered the use of uh, electric power from coal plants as well as um, driving a, a car with gasoline to be a major con contribution to that. Right. So the solar panels um, uh, negated all the need for electricity from uh, coal plants or natural gas plants. And since I have an electric car, I can power the car with solar energy as well, which wow. means I don't use any gasoline whatsoever. That's so great. the the amount of global warming gases and other pollutants that I was generating was pretty much wiped out. Wow! Now, as far as other people doing that, it's it's not very hard at all. Um, I I was able to borrow money against the house at a very low rate, buy the the system for cash, and when you amortize that over a 30-year period, the cost was about $30 a month to wow. pay for the system and the energy that it generated is worth thirty five to forty dollars a month so I was in positive cash flow from day one. Wow that's amazing and anybody can do this. I've got to get me 